My name is Professor Mark Peakman and welcome to our Diabetes Research Laboratories here at King's College London and at the Guy's and St Thomas's Biomedical Research Centre. Our research interest here is in type 1 diabetes and I've been studying type 1 diabetes for about 20 years now. The research that's gone on here and in other parts of the world over the last 20 years has shown us that the immune system is involved in the development of type 1 diabetes. So the evidence that we have gathered and others have gathered suggests that there is an immune response that takes place within the pancreas around the islets that leads to damage to the cells that make the insulin. Now we are trying to do research here that would help us to understand what starts that process, what maintains that process, and how we could intervene to control or prevent that process. During this short video I'm going to introduce you to some of the experiments that we do in the laboratory that we use to try and understand what causes and what might prevent type 1 diabetes. A lot of our research is done using blood samples from volunteers. These can be patients with type 1 diabetes or might be people who are at risk of developing the disease. Once we've taken a blood sample, we take it to the laboratory where we use a special chemical and a centrifuge to separate out the white blood cells that we're interested in studying. We take off this special layer of white blood cells and wash them in the centrifuge. Then it's important to count them and to check that they are alive and healthy before we proceed with our experiments. We do that by looking down a microscope at the cells and staining them with a particular chemical. Once we've obtained the white blood cells, we use them in experiments and ask a number of different questions about their behavior. The first set of questions is asked by putting the white blood cells in the presence of peptide fragments that we believe are the targets of the immune response that is damaging to the islets. We grow the cells with these peptide fragments and then a couple of days later we look to see if the cells are making any chemical messengers. Some of those chemical messengers indicate inflammation and some of them might indicate a protected response. We can actually take photographic images of the chemical messenger that the cells have made and that tells us whether the response is a good one, the chemical messenger is protective, or the response is a potentially damaging one, the chemical messenger is an inflammatory mediator. The second step in these studies focuses on another group of white blood cells that are sometimes called cytotoxic T cells. We can recognize these cells by using proteins that are tagged with a fluorescent molecule. What we do is to label the cells with the protein fluorescent tag and then run these cells through a machine called a cytometer. This is able to look at thousands of cells a second and pick out the ones that are labeled with the fluorescent tag. Now what we expect is that there will be more of those cells in somebody who is developing type 1 diabetes but also that the cells will have a different type of behavior. And if we can identify that, then we have the chance to interfere with that behavior and devise new therapies for the disease. Some of the work that we've been doing here on peptide fragments has already led to studies where we're using those peptide fragments in a therapeutic setting to try and prevent type 1 diabetes. The more research that we do on these reactions and on the cells that are involved should lead us in the future to better and better approaches to preventing and curing this disease.